Hello everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful day today. I wanted to share with you the beautiful blooms on my fowl legato. As you know, she is growing in premium grade orchid spangum moss. Um, I converted her to water culture about two years ago. And after about a year of water culture, I just felt like this one was not growing as well as my other orchids and she's one of my favorites. So I decided to go ahead and convert her over to the orchid grade Spangum Moss, and she has done really very well. As you can see, she is blooming from a secondary spike, and right back here is a primary spike. So uh, the Spangum Moss has really been a good growing media for her. So I've been getting a lot of questions about growing your orchids in Spangum Moss. So I thought I would go over a pro and con about uh, growing in this media. Each media has its upside. It also has its downside or just simply some things that you need to keep in mind so that you'll be acquainted with um, the media. So the first thing I thought I would go over with you is orchids need to be grown in premium orchid grade Spangum Moss or New Zealand Spangum Moss a really high quality premium moss. There's an ordinary brown moss that you can find that most people line baskets with. And that's a different story. You don't wanna use that on your orchids. The regular brown basket lining moss will compact down on you. It probably won't even last a year without you having to repot. So. When you go ahead and get the right type of moss, the orchid grade moss, you're gonna be saving yourself a lot of time and a lot of money. Um, the orchid grade moss is beautiful. It's long lasting and it won't compact down. It retains moisture really well and it provides air pockets so the roots really grow very well. So you don't wanna get the brown basket lining moss that does compact down and it suffocates the roots. Another important thing that you need to know is that moss dries out from the bottom of the pot to the top of the pot because of the capillary action of the moss. So checking the pots for moisture is really important. All I do is I just simply lift up the pot and if it's heavy, I know it doesn't need watering. When it starts getting really light and my roots start turning a little bit silvery, then I know it's time to water. I do check the top of it. I can kind of gauge how much moisture is in there, but until you actually lift that pot, you won't know. So just be aware that um, the weight of the pot normally tells you when it needs to be watered. And another thing you need to be aware of, this is kind of a con. This is the downside of growing in, in moss. If you travel a lot, this might be a difficult media for you to grow in, especially in smaller pots. Um, my Foul Cool Breeze here is in an eight inch pot and I only need to water this every week or so. So if I'm gone for a week, I'm going to be watering this right before I leave and I'll be good to go. Okay, Fal Legato is in a six inch pot. Um, in the summertime, this will need to be watered about every four or five days. So you can see how that would be a little bit difficult. I would need to have somebody come in and water this one sometime midweek while I'm gone. The smaller pots in the summertime require a lot of water. So the smaller the pot, the more often you're gonna to have to water. So keep that in mind. The miniatures absolutely love to grow in Spangum Moss, but just be aware that if you travel a lot, you're gonna to have to really think ahead as far as miniatures or um, smaller pots um, being watered while you're away. Let me give you a little travel tip. 
um, because I have recently been on vacation and I was away for about five days. And so what I did was I pulled my miniatures that are in moss away from the window so they didn't get the bright sunlight during the day. I also put bowls of water around them. So they were in a slightly cooler temperature. And the day that I left on vacation, I went ahead and watered them. So I just got up early that morning, went ahead and watered. Five days later, we were back and these were fine. They, need, they needed to be watered uh, when I got back, but for five days, they were okay. So um, just a little tip, if you'll pull them away from your window or into a cooler part of your room, that's probably going to save you um, your, your miniature Phalaenopsis in moss. Okay, let's get back to some pros. Let's get back to the upside of growing in moss. Um, this is a great media for beginning orchid growers. Orchids absolutely love this premium orchid grade Spangham moss. They grow quickly in it. It keeps the roots hydrated really well. I fertilize at a very low dose in this moss about every other week because it retains moisture and fertilizer. So another thought that I have is if you're having problems with your water culture fowls, you know, it seems to me like either the fowls love water culture or they don't. Um, if yours are having problems, this is the method I would recommend for you to use. Um, moss will hydrate and revitalize an orchid that is struggling. Um, I have seen some of my orchids just turn around so radically in this beautiful spangle moss that it has astonished me. As an example, this is my little star orchid, and um, I really thought that I was going to lose this orchid. It just kept losing roots in water culture. Uh, the leaves were not looking good. As you see, this leaf right here grew out very, very short. This one grew nice and long. This is the one that um, grew in the moss. And if you'll remember my videos from this past summer, this is what this root system looks like now. I hardly had any roots in um, this pot at all. And it is full of roots now. So you can see that especially, you know, the miniatures do well. Uh, even my regular size Phalaenopsis orchids, they just do really, really well in this beautiful moss. I really enjoy um, growing in it. The things that you have to watch for is that you don't over water it and that you don't leave water standing in the pots. Um, it will get too soggy and you don't want your moss being overly saturated with water. And here's another example of one of my fowls that have, has just turned around um, so well in this beautiful Spangham moss. Um, the roots on my buddy fowl were really um, too short to keep in water culture. And as soon as I put him in the orchid grade Spangham moss, the roots just took off. So um, you can see the growth. It's just amazing. They love this moss. And I also grow my miniature Catalea. I kind of um, smile every time I say that because uh, this doesn't look very miniature. It looks very huge. But this Catalea is 11 years old and I have been growing it in New Zealand Spangam moss for that entire time and it has just thrived. So that was what got me started um, on my moss venture with my fowls is I just saw how beautifully this Catalea had done in moss for all these years. So I thank you all so much for watching and you all be highly favored, deeply loved, and greatly blessed. And we'll talk to you next time.